Welcome to Electron Line. The next property we want to consider for Fourier transform is called the frequency shifting property. And how does that work? Well, let's say that we have a function f of t, and then if we take the Fourier transform, we get f of omega. Omega, of course, being the frequency in the frequency domain. Now, what happens when we take the original function in the time domain and we multiply times e to the j omega sub naught t, omega sub naught being a constant frequency, then we have a shift in the frequency domain. Okay, is that good for anything? Turns out it's extremely important. Well, first of all, let's do a little bit of review. For, we know that when we take the Fourier transform of e to the j omega t, we get 2 pi times the delta function omega minus omega sub naught. If we take the cosine, then we also, well, I should say, if we also realize that the cosine of omega t can be written as 1 half times the sum of e to the j omega t and e to the minus j omega t, and then realize that the frequency shifting property allows you to shift things in the frequency domain by multiplying the time domain function by e to j omega t, that gives us kind of an idea. In other words, we could multiply the function times the cosine of omega sub naught t, which is in essence the same as, the, as multiplying times e to the j omega t, except there's two functions or two multiplications, e to the j omega t and e to the minus j omega t. So that's where we're going with this. Now, also, as a reference, we have the Fourier transform of cosine of omega t, of course, is equal to the sum of the two delta functions, omega minus omega sub naught and omega plus omega sub naught, all multiplied times pi. And that will come in handy soon enough. But now let's say that we have the Fourier transform of some function in the time domain multiplied times e to the minus j omega t, we get a shift in the other direction. So if it's plus j omega t, it's a shift in the negative direction, if it's minus j omega t is a shift in the positive frequency direction. So now let's take a look at this again. We're going to take the Fourier transform of that time domain function multiplied times a cosine of omega t, which in essence is this added to this because we have the e to the j omega t and e to the minus j omega t. Also realizing that since the cosine function is one half times the sum of those two, we also have to account for the one half over here. We then take the Fourier transform of each, and then we realize that on the left side here, we have a shift to the left, omega minus omega t, and on the right, we have a shift to the right plus omega t. So now we have the Fourier transforms of each of those. When we add them together and account for the one half, we can then see that not only does the multiplication of the function in the time domain with the cosine of omega t give you two portions to the Fourier transform, one half of it that shifted to the left and one half of that shifted to the right. And on top of that, we also have what we call an amplitude reduction to one half the initial amplitude if there was no shift available there. This in essence is what we know as the amplitude modulation. And we'll show you in several videos how we actually employ this, this technique in order to modulate the signal so we can, we can send it on different frequencies and on a multitude of frequencies over which we can send different carrier uh, frequencies or different carrier signals. So stay tuned to that and we'll give you some more information about it. But this again, very important concept. You multiply the function in the time domain di times e to the j omega t or e to the minus j omega t, which causes the transformed function in the Fourier transform into the frequency domain to be shifted either to the left or to the right. So we're going to see some applications of that in the next videos, so stay tuned.